to more complex games as is a practice in game-based approaches. I'm going to show you the uh, video clip of the uh, representative traditional games teaching in Japan. Oh, sorry. Traditional teaching. Traditionally, the area of ball games in Japan's physical education has been given attention to the skills. So, classes in general usually start from doing well. demonstrate and perform what they have practiced and are often very short in time. In this class, only three minutes of a game is give, being given. Okay. Uh, this line was much like the production line in a factory, which uh, transfers techniques and knowledge using a conveyor belt entirely and assembling them to, into the finished product at the end of the line. That is, uh, that curriculum was for educating athletes. So there has been significant in international influence for game-based approaches. I have listed some of more prominent uh, resources on the slide. Game-based approaches to teaching games are going to become a fixed part of teaching ball games in Japan and replace the outdated approaches I have earlier outlined it. This is because of a very major change in view on the uh, place of physical education in schools and its aim. These changes involve a major shift from teacher-centered to student-centered learning and an emphasis on the intellectual and social aspects of learning in and through games. As such, there is a need to better understanding, understand the nature of tactical learning and relevant outcomes. A prominent focus of student learning within the game-based approaches of instruction is the ability to make appropriate decisions in gameplay situations. Over recent years, the traditional technical approach in Japan is being replaced by an uh, inquiry-based approach, which emphasizes these uh, playing games joyful regardless of skill level. This has uh, resulted in the uh, 2008 National Course of Study. In previous version of the Course of Study, the name of full official sports was used to indicate learning content, and uh, in particular is the uh, three big sports of Japan, which are soccer, uh, basketball, and volleyball. However, the broad term type uh, came to be used for the notation of the content from the religious the uh, revision in 1998 to broaden possibilities for modified small-sided games in the course of study in 2008. This tendency was increasingly emphasized with a move to uh, using the game categories used in TGFU. As a result, all learning contents were described as a type and a full sports name is only shown to provide guidelines. Thus, uh, it seems that the game curriculum has been increasingly shaped by the tactical approach, as is uh, evident in the transition of the content. While it is clear that 
uh, drawing a technique out of context does not produce good games player or typically generate much pleasure for uh, learners. Just letting students play the full game without any structure or aim on the part of a teacher will not necessarily produce good games player either. Under the current course of study, Japanese teachers want students to acquire both knowledge and skills, but with, within uh, the uh, modified games. So they ask their students to implement game plans for each modified game as an uh, agree, uh, agreed strategy for the team. A game plan is a tactical plan uh, developed by the student teams in the game. The game plans are used to dissolve the differences between the players in skill and confidence by allowing all players to contribute to the game plan and share in the team's effort. It focuses on the uh, social interaction involved in the collective design of game plans as an intellectual activity and collective discussion and uh, formulation of a game plan that is then tested in the game. This is followed by the group reflection and evaluation of the uh, plan leading to modification and further testing in the game. This is very similar to the framework for game sense outlined it by light, which describes the need to provide opportunities for learners to collectively formulate strategies, test them in the game, reflect upon the uh, and evaluate them and test again in the same process of inquiry asked for in the game plan approach. So uh, although the game plan en enhance student interaction, many of game plans result in uh, ineffective uh, solutions to problem posed by the game game because the student lack the uh, tactical understanding to inform their decision. Now, I will show you an example the students were asked by the teacher what they would do if the test breaked. So they decided to practice skills such as pass play. The game had started. However, a fast break is being used instead of using the tactics they just practiced. Using a fast break is more effective. comes a chance to do a fast break. However, they only did, did a parable play. There are many tactics that are being practiced but are not used in action games. I have you. Uh, I think you have noticed that the game plans are not effective in the real game. The separation between practice and game is found in this, this movie. I think uh, that the uh, game plans should be based on the tactical understanding. Therefore, instead of focusing on making a game plan from the beginning, uh, teachers need to systematize it through the game as tactical awareness, tactical understanding tactical application and making a game plan. Keywords of our future curriculum are, are participation and collaboration. That is the goal of game-based approaches in Japan is to change the participation at its core to being aware of tactics through experiences. So the scope is related to the tactics covered and also the K-12 sequence would contribute to students uh, making appropriate game plans for game play based on their uh, developmental level. This scope and sequence should, should occur within the every game category. The students were The current physical education curriculum in Japan aims to guide students towards achieving the idea of a uh, lifelong participation in sports and leading an active, active lifestyle. In game, games teaching, it is thus important to make learning enjoyable and meaningful as light suggests in the positive pedagogy approach. 
The influence of game-based approach, such as JU, game dance, and play practice on the game's curriculum in Japan has made a significant contribution toward achieving this aim by uh, moving away from the outdated from skill drill approach and uh, bring, bringing games learning to life for uh, Japanese students. The uh, teaching strategies for games teaching in Japan are changing to learner-centered and game-centered approaches that asks a student to think, to interact, and to inter intellectualize learning in games. Student learning experience in this approach can make games a fun turning point in the move from military dream of the constructualized uh, technique. The current course of study and its focus on inquiry and student-centered learning can produce a learning that is fun and promote a fascination with games for young people by giving the uh, ga games back to students and allowing them to enjoy and learn through a structured play, reflection, and social interaction. Okay, so next, uh, Bianca is going to explain about uh, differences and the commonalities between games-based approaches. Uh, thank you, Naoki, for presenting this um, first half. I will now share my um, screen with all of you, so hopefully you can see. Okay, so um, what I will do is I think we can all agree that um, across the world, um, since Teaching Games for Understanding, um, a lot of other um, approaches have been developed, um, having the students in mind and just taking away the focus um, of the teachers. So giving the students a little bit more of a, a role, an active role in their learning. So what I will do today, and because I don't have time to go over all of the approaches that have been developed um, across the, the globe, I'll just go briefly and talk a little bit about them. And I would like all of you to actually pay attention to some bold um, words that I have that will be um, important at the end what, where I will talk about the commonalities and the differences um, between these approaches and what we can, can we take from them. So I'll just open the chat as well to make sure that if you have questions, we can actually talk. Okay, so um, over the years, as you can see here, and these are just a few examples of some um, game-based approaches that have been developed around the, the globe. And today I'm going to actually talk um, and use the term game-based approaches, just because we have games concept approach as well that has been developed in Singapore. So we don't confuse the terms that will be using game-based approaches. So um, a lot of um, approaches have been developed with teaching games for understanding being actually the, the first one. So as you can see here, and I'll just go pretty quickly over them so we can have a discussion at the end. So teaching games for understanding um, is a six step-by-step -step model that was developed in 1982 um, by David Bunker and Rod Thorpe. Um, and this was an alternative to the traditional um, methods. So these methods, so the traditional ones, they were focused on the development of skill and technique at the expense of um, tactical understanding. And this was something that they wanted to change. So I have some um, references that you can go and search for more information about it. So this is basically the, the model that DGFU um, has. So it starts with the game. So that's very important because they all the learning in t teaching games for understanding is game-based. So there's always some form of opposition. So either small-sided games um, or just they, they change the game. There's always some form of opposition. Then they would move to um, the step two, which is game appreciation. And here we would let the students recognize the purpose of the game and we would give them time to see what the game is all about. So there's an understanding that goes through this um, second step, and this is based on um, when, they're, when they're playing, so they, they get an understanding of, of the game. 
then we would move to the, the third step, and this will be tactical understanding. Um, and here the students are actually introduced to tactics um, through a gradual introduction of movement principles. And usually it is based on simple ideas of space or, or time, for example. Then we would move to um, step four, which is making appropriate decisions. And here the students would gain an understanding of when and how to perform the skills um, and working on their um, decision-making abilities. So here's where I want you to pay attention. So moving on, we would move on to um, step five. And here we have um, skill execution. So um, imagine that you have a class, for example, and that you have, I don't know how many students, maybe 20 or more. And in their own way, they're all different. So when you go through all these steps and then you go to step five and you have skill execution where you actually work on the production of the required movement, for example, it might be a pass, it might be shooting or um, I don't know, just imagine, imagine that. Um, so you would have to stop, work on the skill and then go back. So imagine those 20 students that you have and imagine that they are at different levels would you actually have to um, work on skill execution at this step to all of them? So I would like you to think about the, the needs of your students and if they need to work on skill execution right here, or if they have to work on um, those skills previously, or if they don't even need to work on those skills to be successful um, playing the game. And then you would move on to the last step, which would be um, performance. And here is where the outcome of the previous um, steps are actually observed. So the performance is measured based on how well and appropriately a student can actually execute a skill. So this is what I would like you to pay attention. I have this for all the approaches that I'm going to talk about, and it would be just a, a quick summary of them. And I would like you to pay attention to the, the bold words or sentences. So teaching games for understanding is a six step-by-step -step model. Um, the focus is on the game as a whole. Um, learning is placed in modified games. Um, it focuses on tactics, decision-making, and problem-solving. Um, and it's the, the main um, thing on teaching games for understanding is the main goal. And the teacher adopts um, more of a mentor um, role. So questioning and inquiry is very important when using teaching games. So if we go to tactical games model, this is another um, model that was developed in 2006 by Mitchell, Oslin, and Griffin. Um, it is a variation of teaching games for understanding and it um, emphasizes the learning of movement forms or skills within um, the game context. It is a, a three step-by-step -step, um, model that allows students to immediate, immediately um, see the relevance of a skill within the context of the game or practice um, situations. So here are the three steps. So step number one would be a game form. And this is also a modified or a small sided game that will present a tactical problem to the students that needs to be solved um, through playing the game. Then we would have step two, and here's tactical awareness. So the teacher acts as a facilitator and through questioning, helps students recognize the tactical problem, what to do, and what is required to be successful. And then the last step is skill execution. So the teacher helps students learn how to perform the skills using appropriate learning cues. So here, once again, you see that it's a little bit um, less strict than teaching games for understanding in terms of how many steps it has, gives the teacher probably a little bit more flexibility um, to see the students that it has in front of them and um, to analyze what they need. But once again, we have skill execution um, that makes the, the teacher, um, they, they need to work on skill execution, even if it's not needed because it is a model. So usually the models, it might be easier for the teachers um, to follow, um, but then it, it takes away a little bit the flexibility of recognizing the, the needs of the students and what they need at um, specific moments. So if we look at um, tactical games model, it is a three step-by-step -step model. Um, 
the, the goal here is to learn how to perform the skills within the game. Learning is placed in modified or small-sided games. Um, it uses questioning to help students recognize the practical problems and the teacher acts um, as a facilitator. So GameSense is another approach, um, probably a little bit more recent. Um, so if we see the first publication was in 1997, so not that recent, by Dandun, um, but only in 2013, um, because Richard Light just published a book on it, this approach became well known, especially in Australia. So in the beginning, it was more um, focused on coaching, but um, recently it has been um, developed for teaching as well in Australia. So this approach, has only four main pedagogical features. And the first one is design the learning environment. So here the design needs to suit um, the learning outcome and it needs to provide for a, a modification to make it more complex or simpler. So depending on the levels of the students and the teacher or coach needs to be able to change um, the task accordingly or appropriately. So then we have emphasize questioning. This is the, the next pedagogical feature, emphasize questioning to generate dialogue. So here the, the questions, they, they need to be open to generate dialogue. So the questions need to generate a range of answers instead of just predetermined um, answers. And this is a, something that it's hard for teachers and coaches as well, um, because it requires experience um, so usually in the beginning, they go to more um, closed questions, um, like yes or no questions, um, or just have some options. So here it's important to make sure that they're open and usually using um, or starting the questions with why, where, or when. It allows the students to think a little bit more or deeper um, on those questions and formulate um, uh, different answers because we're not looking for a correct answer. We're looking for answers that they will then be able to put into practice and then um, experiment, see if they work, and if not, come up with a different answer. So the, the third pedagogical feature is um, provide opportunities for collaborative formulation of ideas and solutions that are later tested and evaluated. And this is exactly what I was just um, talking about. So we need to allow the students to formulate a strategy um, or an action plan um, through group dialogue and then let them implement their strategies in the game. And then the last um, pedagogical feature of GameSense is um, develop a supportive social moral environment. So here the, the, in GameSense, the relationship between the teacher and the students is more equal. So asking the students to speak up and come up with their um, own ideas provides an environment where they feel comfortable. Um, and this will help them develop as um, problem solvers and thinkers, and they will not be afraid of making a mistake. So um, game sense, different from teaching games for understanding and tactical games model, it is a more flexible and open approach, open to interpretation. So there is no prior identification of skills to be developed. The student-centered and inquiry-based. Inquiry um, the teacher and or coach acts as a facilitator and learning um, of learning rather than a person in charge of the learning um, process and it uses modified games to develop problem solving abilities. So here the students can use these abilities of uh, problem solving, um, not only in game situations, but also in life. So there's a transfer um, from what they learn in physical education um, or sports um, into life as well. So the other approach is games concept approach. So it is a four stage model. So it is a little bit more um, similar to tactical games model, for example, um, still a, a variation of teaching games for understanding. It was developed in Singapore and this was part of a larger um, scale national curriculum reform. Um, its main goal is to improve students' competence in both learning and playing games. 
So the way that it works is that the first stage is play. So here is where teachers introduce a game and let the students play. Um, so the, the main goal is to observe where the teacher needs to intervene and what it needs to be worked on. So it's pretty much just a, a game. It can be a warm up. So then the, the teacher can be on the sideline and just observing, taking notes and see what they need to work on. Um, stage two is practice. So here there are skill drills and questioning are introduced based on the teacher's previous observation. So once again here, as you can see, skill drills, even though they are in the context of the game, um, they need to be focused on a skill that needs to be worked on, um, which for example, in game sense, that might not be the case because there's no um, identification of a skill that needs to be worked on. Um, so then if we move to stage three, here the teacher goes back to the first stage, which is play, um, but this time with the goal of observing what has changed with the skill, um, the skill drills. Um, and if it needs to something, if it needs to be worked on or changed again. And then the last stage would be the game and teachers here introduce different games or an extension of the game that has been played. So here is where they can um, simplify the game if needed or make it more um, complex according with the um, level of the students. So game-centered approach is a four stage model it intends to foster students' abilities regarding problem solving and decision making, while it promotes their interest and enjoyment, and it uses questioning to develop problem solving abilities. So I would like to talk now a little bit about the differences and the commonalities between these approaches. So all game-based approaches, they share the same goal. And for that reason, there are more common aspects than differences to point out. So I would like you to think about this. So imagine that, for example, th there's a lot of um, approaches that have been developed and the, the way they are structured, even though they're similar, um, that's one of, of the differences because they were developed um, in different countries to suit different needs. So the, the way that they are structured are different. So while teaching games for understanding in tactical games model, and, and also game-centered approach um, are more specific in its implementation. They, they follow a step-by-step -step model and they are more strict. Um, game sense and for example, um, play practice as well, they are more flexible and open to interpretation. Um, and also the other difference, which is in my opinion, the main difference is their origin. So. Game-based approaches, they have been developed by different countries to fill their needs. Um, so hence why their initial purpose was not always the same. Um, so teaching games for understanding, tactical games model and um, game-centered approach is more um, prescriptive and they were mainly developed to help physical education teachers while game sense and um, play practice, they were more performance um, focused and they, they had um, a little bit of a different role when they were first developed, which was um, to support coaches and teachers existing practice. So it was not to change the way they were teaching, but to support um, their, their current practice. So I would like you to think about the common aspects with, um, within game-based approaches. So they all share the, the same goal and this is one of the main common aspects and the one that allows us as teachers and coaches to actually gravitate towards one approach or the other according with our students' um, need. So improving students' tactical awareness, decision-making and problem-solving skills is the main goal for all of them. So they have also the potential to enhance the ability to transfer tactical knowledge. So if we think about, for example, all um, invasion games, they all have a lot in um, common, for example. So they all want, um, for example, the, the one team to score, the other team, the, for example, don't let the other um, team score on, on defense. We, we want to create space. Um, so they all want the same um, knowledge from the students. So there, there's the ability to transfer that knowledge from game to game and also from approach to approach. 
And the other one is enhanced learning through participant um, motivation and enjoyment. So all the, the approaches, even though they are different, they have some aspects that are very important for us as teachers and coaches to be able to understand and make a judgment in the moment or when we're planning our classes um, of what approach should we use or if we can use one um, element of this approach and one element of the other approach just to suit um, our, our needs and, and what our students are um, needing at the moment. So um, this will be the end of my presentation, but I will just um, leave you with a reflection. So game-based approaches have more in common that, than they have um, different from each other. And the fact that they are underpinned by theories um, of learning that are very much alike allows teachers and coaches to fluctuate between approaches and use transferable features to suit the, the learner's needs. So recognizing the similarities between them is very important for the ongoing development of pedagogical um, content of teachers and coaches. So I will now probably um, just open up my chat if you would like to make some questions while um, Naoki presents the last part. So thank you, Naoki, I think you can share your screen now. You can continue okay. with your lecture. Hello. Move on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, move on to other subtopics. I am going to tell you some examples of lessons where uh, game based approaches were implemented. So, uh, in Japanese physical education, ritualistic warming up was commonly performed before the main activity. However, I recommended that uh, warm up also to be done with a very simple low impact game as shown in the video. 10 minutes warm up is uh, often held at the beginning of physical education lesson. This seems to be the same kind of activity that is often carried out independently of the main learning content. Therefore, we developed a warm up game that is deeply connected to the main learning content. This is a fun and active game that uh, prepares uh, students for learning. Please watch the video clip to see the differences between skill practice and warm-up games. Please take a look at the uh, subtitles on the screen. Okay, uh, here's one example. This is a striking and feeling game lesson in the elementary school. The main game is a buttress game with modified baseball game. The uh, offense through the ball, instead of hitting the ball from home base, the defense uh, picks up the thrown ball and uh, return it to home base. If the offense uh, turns around the cone and back to home base uh, before the ball comes back to home base, the offense uh, can be scored. If the uh, defense throws ball back to home base early, the offense gets one out. So as a warm-up game, we implemented the traditional Japanese game, Dragma Sanga Koronda. It seems like red light, green light in Western countries. The students played an industry and uh, made the same decision as they played baseball. They also, uh, this is a, a Dharma Sangha Koronda. Uh, they also com competed by throwing the ball in the multiple uh, people and walking quickly. As they get a little more body temperature, uh, they can learn instead of walk. 
In physical education, the high skilled players and the low skilled players play a game together. Also, uh, their skill level and their decision making is not so high. It's too difficult for them to learn in an official game. So we often use small sided games. So small sided games are games with a small number of players on each side. The key point is that because there were uh, fewer players, each player gets uh, more touches of the ball and uh, there are many additional benefits. This game is invasion game. It's uh, a four versus four competition. Players pass the ball for getting the ball. The player who has the ball cannot move of uh, necessity that the player who does not have the ball must uh, support the player who has the ball. We make a decision easier by uh, reducing the number of players and uh, using simple skills for playing game. In the past, uh, class, classes were often taught separately for girls and boys. And, uh, but these days in PE, games are often played in a mixed gender format. This game is a netball type game. This game is similar to volleyball. However, in an official volleyball game, they do few rallies because official volleyball techniques are too complex for students. So students play a netball type game with a ball as light as balloon with fewer players on smaller court and with rules at, that allow you to catch and throw the ball. They play the game uh, by different skills, but the decision uh, they use are the same as in volleyball. In this game named ground, ground ball, the skill is very simple because the players compete by rolling the ball around. However, the tactical behavior is similar to that of a game like volleyball. In this way, the game is motivated to allow the student to learn while having fun. This game is uh, baseball without batting. Attackers throw the ball instead of hitting the ball with a, a ball bat. Also, the runner is making decisions about where to come uh, come back to home base in a straight line cone. The further uh, they get as far as possible, the more runs they can score. Thus, uh, just like baseball, the ball and uh, the runners are uh, competing to see who can get to their uh, destination faster. But the game consists of simple decisions and simple skills. The key to uh, creating games based approach is to modify the game in this way to meet the reality of students. Uh, I'm going to explain the teaching behavior which the teacher makes a student aware of questioning. So, uh, it is a student, not the teachers, uh, who make the assignment. The key to this is questioning. First, students play a simple game. Then the teacher observes it very carefully. This invasion game is like a basketball with four players versus four players passing the ball to score points. The uh, teacher asks the students what they did well and what they did not do well. They were tas uh, tasked with not uh, being able to pass with each other well. So the teacher challenged them to connect the passes uh, accurately and uh, had them play a game of three attackers and one defender to connect the passes. The teacher asked the students what kind of cooperation would help them to attack better. They responded that, that is, it was uh, about making good decision about where to move when they didn't have the ball in order to get the next one. So we uh, challenged them to try to move from the position of the next ball receiving player and the defensive position to the appropriate position. As the student finished the game, they would uh, look back at the uh, team oh, to improve uh, their next game. 
then uh, at the end of the game, they played the uh, same game as the first. Students began to spread out and uh, play at the final game of this lesson. So at the end, so uh, teacher asked them to look back and see what they had learned in class today. All uh, students responded by focusing on working together to connect the path. It is clear that the uh, questions were closely linked to game assessment and uh, uh, message system. I'm going to show you the uh, sequence of of game-based approach from the beginning of the lesson to the end of uh, the lesson. TGFU consists of six steps. The lesson I'm about to show you follow this format. I am going to show you a lesson for 15 minutes. I edited it for around five minutes. This is my teaching for college students as if students were junior high school students. The class started with a game, not a practice session. This is a small-sided game, similar to the invasion games you saw earlier. The code is intentionally long and narrow. This is to make it difficult to pass the ball and to remind the students of the importance of support. The rules of this uh, game were simple. However, the player did not understand how to cooperate e effectively. Players could not pass the ball accurately the uh, turnovers were repeated during the game. In the first game, no one was able to score. When the first game was over, I repeated the questions based on the gameplay instead of giving them tasks. I asked them uh, questions that uh, delivered, delivered uh, into their thinking and it helps them articulate the uh, needs that are needed to be solved in them. They answered the challenges that they did not pass well. Then they realized that uh, the place to uh, make a pass was where there was no space uh, for opponents between the teammates. They defined this as an appropriate space for themselves. The, the challenge was to move into this appropriate space and support it. So they played a game to solve the uh, challenge. This is a drill game. The attacker touched the free cone and the defense protected it from being touched. A cone is considered the same as a free space and the goal is to get it to touch quickly. Through this activity, the player realized that appropriate space was something to be created. In other words, the appropriate space was not objectively there, but was uh, created there in relationship. So uh, next, uh, they will do, uh, they do the uh, task game. So uh, to solve this challenge, they play the games by expanding the court to make it easier to move around. Once they uh, play the game, they deflection on it and repeated this over and over again. Game, deflection, game, deflection. Then, so at the end, they play the same game as they did at the beginning. This was also a performance assessment situation. Surprisingly, some students uh, emerged to play screens to help their uh, teammates move into space and get the ball. They showed no uh, such behavior in the first game. Their movements had ob obviously become quicker and they were able to connect with the ball and score goals as well as getting better at attacking. 
they were also getting better at defending, and it was clear that all players were getting better throughout playing the game. They, uh, they appreciated the uh, changes uh, they made after the game as a result of being aware of the way. They worked together and the uh, quality of, of their play. Uh, at the end, so they looked back and uh, are connected to the next learning session. The game is teacher. Teaching is an organic connection between game and player. Okay, so I'm going to introduce another GPA lesson to you. First, uh, this is a warm up game. I don't know, this is a net, net to all type game for ninth grader. So uh, the class is 15 minutes long. First, uh, this is a warm up game. The attacker was alone and was trying to score by dropping the ball to avoid being caught by three defenders. This was a super small sided game. The teacher explained in the video how to play the game. In this game, players played a game of three versus three players on the badminton court. The rule was that a players could uh, connect the ball up to three times within the, their own team and a second time they could catch it. <laughs> the teacher observed the game carefully to identify situations that would be a challenge. He took a picture of it. After the game, the teacher showed the picture and asked some questions to students. In this case, they were focusing on defense. The teacher had the students try to figure out why the ball had uh, dropped. Students concluded that it was uh, because they did not position themselves properly after attacking. Therefore, students played a game with positioning in mind. One student had played the game they defeated the reflection discussion. <clears throat> so students wrote down what they learned at the, at the end of the lesson on their learning card. So then the students captured them in a, a photo and uh, uploaded them to the crowd to share with their uh, friends. <clears throat> After assessing uh, their outcomes, uh, they con continued playing the game again until the end of the class time. Okay, so I am developing the use of technology in physical education. I am going to show you how I use uh, technology in my classes with the game-based approach. This is a class that I taught the pedagogy of physical education to college students. I assumed the upper, upper elementary uh, grades and taught uh, college students as kids. Uh, first, I showed a uh, video of the warm up games to students. They could uh, quickly understand how to play the activity. <coughs> I introduced the main game with a video. They could understand it faster and more accurate, accurately than the verbal explanation. They looked at uh, um, uh, video clips. Uh, this was uh, the first game. Students was developing an understanding of the game through playing the game. Once I determined that they understood the game, I had the student videotape uh, their first game. Students uh, repeated the games during the game. So the observer should videotape the game. Video recording was limited to 20 seconds. The, the observer decided whether or not to save the uh, video after it is taken. I asked the students questions. <coughs> after the game to encourage tactical awareness. Then the students reviewed the video they uh, filmed during the game and discussed their play during the game. Yeah. 
Yes, now, so student wrote, oh, sorry. Oh, student wrote their target on the whiteboard and repeated to play games. One student had facilitated, facilitated tactical understanding. I had the student videotape the game again with observers. The student filmed the game while commenting for the gameplay with other observers. The students explained that uh, they were able to defend their uh, position uh, vertically as a plant and uh, were able to pass quickly and attack with aggression uh, as targeted. The student assessed the uh, game using his or her understanding of the game tactically. They watched a video of the game with a commentary, uh, metacognitize it and uh, discussed it with their peers to deepen their understanding. They played the game again and then they discussed their achievement of the target they just wrote on the whiteboard. They did an audio recording of the assessment result on the picture of writing the target. Yes, the recording time was intentionally short, 10 seconds, to, uh, because uh, they had to focus on the outcomes. Oh, sorry. No. Okay. So additionally, the, the game matches were repeated and the game were recorded. They compared it to the first game to see the changes. The screen on the left from you is the first game and the screen on the right is second half of game. Did you notice the differences? I believe uh, you can see that the students were able to attack more quickly than they did at the beginning. They gathered as a, a whole and uh, shared the uh, results of their learning. They reflected on the uh, learning and uh, developed a game plan. The game plans were sent only to the teachers so that the uh, other teams didn't know about it. The game plan was shown on teacher's tablet like a slide with words. I sent uh, around to each team to coach them, checking the strategy on the tablet. Students played a game of three versus three. The teacher as a whole, as, uh, whole asked questions to see how they could uh, cooperate. This is the last game of that day. The student had been in class for only 45 minutes and were getting good, very good at it. At the end of the class, students recorded their self-assessment on their tablet.
only 10 seconds. And the uh, video used for game analysis also looks different depending on how it is filmed. I am going to show you video clips of the same play taken in two different ways. The first is video clip taken with the camera fixed on the tripod. The next is a video clip taken from the uh, sky using a drone. It's the same scene, but I think that the uh, thought it gives us uh, have changed. I also use other wearable cameras, but how we film them is important as an informative, informative look, down, look back at the game. I explained about the game-based approach with showing some examples through video. Did you make sense of it? I am going to conclude it by offering four tips for teachers to implement uh, game-based approaches at the end of our lecture. Number one, uh, teachers need to teach uh, games in and through playing games, including warm-ups. Uh, number second, Teachers must design games to help students improve their understanding and skills. It is important to tailor materials to fit the game to students, not to fit students to the game. Number three, uh, teach, teaching is facilitating and mediating rather than instructing. This is where uh, frequent questions are asked to encourage students' awareness and uh, help them to engage in learning with needs. Number four, uh, teachers devise assessment methods to promote students' learning and uh, make their learning sustainable. Okay, so that's all I have to say. Uh, thank you for your listening. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Uh, you could stop sharing the slide, please. Okay. It was, it was a wonderful session. And uh, it did very informative. Even though some of the questions were answered, we'd like to ask. I think we'll still- trying to answer the questions at the same time. I know, but, but we'd like to, so that everybody could hear that too. One yes. of the questions asked by Vajit Bashir was, which method is valuable for teaching elementary child in skill learning? No, okay, I think you already answered that one. So if you would like to answer oh, that sorry, question. So I, I, I didn't uh, so hear that, sorry. So please say again. Uh, you want me, uh, which method is valuable for teaching elementary children in skill learning? Skill learning. Oh, yes. I, this is my idea. So, so elementary school kids should learn uh, so, uh, game skill uh, through the uh, playing game, not uh, so, uh, so skill training. We don't want to the incorporate the skill training into the so elementary school uh, PE. Okay. Could you speak something on uh, talent identification? How do you identify talents? Um, I was actually answer, uh, answering that question right now. So I believe I can um, try sure, to answer. Sure, sure. Because that's that's that everybody could hear that. That's why we want you to speak up, please. Yes, okay. So um, talent um, identification is actually very hard in early ages, especially in the PE context. Um, because we have, um, we, we actually have a lot of sports and, and games that we need to teach in um, just a small amount of time. So I was actually answering that, that by using game-based approaches where we go um, and teach the game as a whole, and we're looking for the, the, the tactical awareness and the decision-making and problem-solving, we can actually look to kids that can have talent on that um, and then after that, 
um, focus more on skill and what sport they're actually good at. Because if we look at the the, um, the talents around the world in many sports, one of the things that they are very good at is that decision making. Um, and that makes them so good. Not only the skill, because skill can be developed and worked on throughout the years, but the, the decision making, if it's not worked on and not picked up um, very soon in an early age, um, it's very hard to develop. So I believe that by using game-based approaches and implementing um, games, um, it, it would be easier for teachers and for um, sports coaches to pick up on those um, particular aspects. Thank you. Uh, this, this topic is something new for us because we talk of teaching games for understanding. We have to implement those. Even I have a doubt whether we are understanding something. We talk of game sense. Could you just give a brief description on that? Even though you have covered the topic, Maybe it would be more clear for our participants too. Yes. So um, the the game sense approach is actually how can I say a little bit more flexible. So it has those features that the the teachers and the coaches can look at and implement them as they need. So instead of having a model um, and just steps that we need to follow and that we are just focused on that and we forget about what our students need. Um, we have those guidelines uh, in the back of our mind, knowing the students that we have in front of us and what they actually need to work on to, to develop and be motivated. And we just use them as needed. So, so questioning, open, open questions, um, the planning of the session. So all of that is the most important thing. And um, after that, just making sure that the students are part of the learning process and there's almost um, an equal um, relationship between the, the teacher, um, the coach, um, and the student. So that is very important for um, developing a game sense approach. So I believe that if we look at game sense as being flexible, as I said, um, we can implement this approach everywhere um, instead of just focusing on, once again, developing another um, approach that will suit our country so just being a little bit more flexible and doing what we are trying to make our students do which is being thinkers and problem solvers and do it ourselves as teachers and coaches instead of being just focused or, or having a, a piece of paper with um some steps that we we have to follow it's indeed a wonderful session and a new concept which you're brought in so i think uh, uh, there are a lot of questions which is coming but before that over to the panelists uh, we have Professor Rosa. Rosa, yeah. Well, Luisa is also here. Maybe her video is on. Professor Rosa. Hi. Yes, thank you. I just would like, if possible, if Walter Ho could speak first, because I know he has been working for quite a while with teaching game for understanding. So, so what do you want to please? I'm sorry. I, I just. <laughs> No, that's fine. It's, yeah. All right, okay. Uh, I, I need to say thank you, uh, Suzuki, and also thank you, Monica, because uh, this is actually very interesting. I will still remember sometimes uh, in July that you invite me to attend your sections. But, and I, I, what my feeling is tonight is more fruitful. Tonight I see more. It's far better than the last time. <laughs> okay, but I, uh, I think... Uh, Game sense or teaching games or understanding should be something very new to uh, to uh, most of the Indian um, PFE education teachers, because if I'm correct, that this time of teaching is uh, this time of concept is actually seldom being taught in India, and then uh, I I had a number of time that I was in Osmana and had the watching how the teachers teaching these education in that city. And then I understand that, uh, yes, this is true that they still adopt a very traditional model concerning about skill, 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 and game. But the game actually go back to the skills. Try to, the game itself, itself is try to reinforce, reinforce the skill. Okay, they are not absolutely, they are not really without games. Like the purpose of games sometimes is used for is used to reinforce the skill learning. So this is a what I feel. For 
Then my question is, if this is the situation happened in India, then what would be your advice to teachers and how, how should they, they change their brain and what kind of, of things that you advise them if they, if they start from game, 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 or game, skill, game, skill, not skill, 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 game. So either using a game sense approach or teaching games for understanding or any other game-based approaches, um, the, still, the skill can still be worked on, um, but it doesn't come first. So, so that's the main difference. So we are trying to look to the game as a whole and then if needed and when needed, work on those skills to help our students or um, athletes to be successful. So that's the aim of the game-based approach is that they, they can move on through their learning of the game, um, being successful and motivated at the same time and enjoy that learning process. So yeah. um, sometimes working on skill, 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 and then game, that's what the kids love, which is the game. They're always looking forward to, towards the end of the class. And that's why sometimes teachers and coaches say oh, that they're not motivated or the girls don't like physical education because first they don't, um, they don't feel like that they're part of that because usually boys are better than girls on skill execution. So they feel a little bit left out. So if we pick on those games and learn the game as a whole and learn the concept because they can all be very good thinkers and problem solvers and come up with different answers and try them on. So if we do that um, and let the skill be worked on as it is needed, I think that will be a, a, a great step forward. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I will order that to the so Japanese school for the observing some lesson there. Maybe so a Japanese teacher showed the uh, so skill, skill, skill game approach for you. But now so we are trying to this, uh, uh, shift to the so games uh, based approach from the so traditional uh, teaching approach. And uh, so also the soccer, you know, Japanese soccer team. Uh, I think so Japanese soccer team is very strong. Huh? So, so Japanese soccer coaching. Uh, so it's now uh, so game centered approach, game based approach. No skill training, so game, 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 and they have they learn uh, so skills and knowledge through the playing the game. Yeah, game is a teacher, so that's very important for so uh, teachers now. Thank you, okay. Rosa. Yeah, Rosa. Okay, yes. Uh, just uh, thank you very much for both of you for speaking about teaching game for understanding. I know that uh, this concept has been. Uh, very used in many English speaking countries. Okay, that's uh, what I had felt. And in some and in Asia, because since the last I would say 15 years, I have been having contact in Asia, there's always a workshop a workshop on game uh, for understanding always there's one in there. Now, what I find it quite interesting that worldwide, in spite of the fact of all the efforts that has been done in order not to emphasize so much in skill, it's still our physical education teachers, skill goes first, okay? So this is just, uh, I, I indicate this because it's evident in all the research. So I just want to leave that for you to make any comment. On the other hand, in some places, like for example, in here in Venezuela, people are not talking much about game for understanding, but it's like comprehensive physical education from a holistic approach in the sense of how we engage with all the subjects in the curriculum. So in order to make it more understanding, develop cognitive uh, approach. And the, the other part is how to make the game, how to make the physical activity more approachable to the kids so they enjoy it so they use much more the idea of the game in order to engage the kids but not leaving the concept of the approach in there but the comprehensive one and i think that has helped in some places to make it understand that physical education is not just playing or games, but it goes further than that. So I just, your comments about that, please. Um, 
Naoki, would you like to speak or, or should I go first? <laughs> okay, you are first, huh? Okay, so um, regarding the first aspect, Rosa, um, I'm from Portugal and I understand what you're saying about um, these kind of approaches and developments, um, the fact that they have been um, more evident in English um, speaking countries, because in Portugal, we barely um, hear about these approaches and developments. Um, I heard about teaching games for understanding, but I believe many other countries that are not English um, speaking have heard about them, but still it doesn't move past that just hearing mm -hmm. about it. it. It doesn't go to the schools. It doesn't go to the school system. They don't know what that is and the teachers still go to skill, skill, skill game. Yeah. I believe that's something that is related with the curriculum. And if we look, for example, to Singapore's example, um, they had that reform in the curriculum that helped them implement um, the approach that they developed. So for example, um, in Portugal's case, there's no approach. They heard about each game for understanding, but the curriculum is still assessing the skills. So the teachers and, and coaches, they, they still see the need to work on those skills um, first because that, that's what they need to yeah. assess pretty much. So I believe that the change, even though uh, we all know that the developments are there needs to start from the curriculum, so then we can pass that and move forward. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. You're welcome, you're welcome. Uh, Suzuki's. Okay, thank, uh, thank you for the, so asking a question. So that is a very difficult question. So because Japan is in Asia. Uh, so, uh, Sorry. Yes, <laughs> same area. But uh, so now, so Japan's country that uh, focuses on so uh, game-based approach now, because so we we uh, so imported so this idea from the so Western country. That, so we agreed with so this idea. Uh, I think uh, so coaching is uh, so earlier than uh, so teaching, and uh, so I so now so we. Uh, so focus on the 21st century skills. And uh, I think uh, they have to learn uh, so everything. Uh, so based on uh, so um, cognitive domain and uh, so integrated cognitive domain and uh, so physical domain. Then uh, so they have to uh, so learn uh, skills and knowledge through the playing the game because they're uh, enjoyable activity. Uh, so skill-centered approach so uh, makes them uh, so boring. So uh, high school students would like that, but so low skill students don't like uh, do work uh, for their so skill training, huh? And uh, so, but so you, I showed you the so video clips. So high school students and low school students join the same uh, game, but uh, they enjoyed playing. And so uh, girls and boys play uh, so together. It's easy now. And uh, so I showed uh, so video clips for the college students. So before the, my lesson, they said uh, they didn't like physical education. They didn't want to play game, but they played so together. They enjoyed playing the game. Why? So very easy for them to play uh, games with uh, other people uh, because so game is not optional. Uh, so I designed uh, so uh, small-sided game for the so uh, college students. We have to modify the so games for the so learning skills and knowledge through the playing the game. That's very important. We don't teach uh, optional game. We teach uh, so gameplay through the uh, modified game. Is it okay? Yeah. Sorry. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rosa. Yeah, Luza, because uh, yeah, Luza, for your remarks, please. You need to unmute, please. Unmute. 
sorry. Um, it's an interesting or a philosophical conversation, I guess. Um, do I emphasize skill? Well, in my experience and, and, and in the theory that I like to um, engage, I need, I need buy-in from the student for a better result. So the child, especially at young ages, learns um, by playing. And if they enjoy their play, they are more likely to enhance their experience, which will equal to uh, um, they will absorb better and apply to real life because the experience was positive. So I want it more. Um, so that's what I found interesting in um, in in this approach. Um, it lessen a little bit on the uh, rigidity and more on the movement and enjoying it and game. And it's always, you know, I, I like to say it's always the way you present it. It's like if you tell um, a kid you have to do it versus wouldn't it be great and you're still getting him to do it, but you just change the words. Especially with this generation, which is very different. You know, when I was told you do it, you do it and you don't ask questions, period. And you do it to the best of your ability. This generation is not like that. This generation is going to question and they're going to want to go on their phone, on their tablets. And, you know, so we have to like put more effort on the buy-in and, 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 you know, get them on our side and kind of change their attitude. So I found this approach very helpful, especially with this uh, population that we're facing as teachers. Thank you. Um, May I comment on that, Louisa? Absolutely. Uh, it's interesting that you're saying that because, um, as I said, I've been in New Zealand for the past four years, and I was able to go to a school in New Zealand while I was doing my PhD, and it was a low decile school, so um, in terms of social economic status, it was lower, and the kids were a little bit more challenging. Um, so I actually had a teacher there, a um, very young teacher, um, and she just had finished um, university. And she was teaching a game. Uh, the name was Kiorahi, which is a, a Maori name, um, a Maori game, which is very common in New Zealand. And the first thing that she said to them was, let's do the kaupapa. And I didn't know what that was. And kaupapa is pretty much the, in the beginning of the session, they will explain what they will do. So then the kids were aware of what they were going to do in that session. And the second thing that she said was, how can we achieve something? So she had a task or a question or something. And she was trying to um, make them engaged from the beginning um, and ask them, how can we achieve it? Or uh, what game can we do to achieve that by the end of the session? So what you're saying now about having the kids coming to our side as teachers and coaching uh, coaches and actually be part of that learning process. Um, it's totally um, correct and I agree 100% with what you said. And this game-based approach is exactly that, is just focusing on the holistic and the game as a whole and, and transferable concepts from the game to life, pretty much. That's what, what they were trying to do there with, with those kids. Um, so that's what I think game-based approaches do is just moving those concepts, not only from game to game or sport to sport, but from lesson to lesson, from those lessons to life. So all the problem solving and, and all of that is pretty much holistic. So they have that ability. And if I can add to that, um, the generation I see now is they need to have um, immediate gratification. Hmm. Um, learning because it's my responsibility and it's going to help me be a better citizen and contribute to society. It's kind of a hard concept, at least with, with the population that I am surrounded. So you have to kind of help them digest it. And it is fun. And trust me, get on the train with me. It's going to be fun. Give me a chance. Mm. And when I finally have their buy-in, then it's easy but it has to be fun. They have to feel some kind of gratification. 
instantly. And I'm not saying this is a good thing, but this is the reality. Yes. Adapt to the, the reality pretty much. Yes. And we have to adapt to our reality. <laughs> of course, of course. Thank you. Thank you, Luzia. Uh, Dr. Yuri, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, a very interesting presentation. Thank you to both of you. Uh, very en enriching and reminding me about all the theories of, of uh, games learning and, and, and the, the various options, how to reach out to children and to educate them. What I, what I found uh, is to both sides. On the one hand, you know, you, you, don't, you don't use the game as, as a mean to win or to lose, but you are using the game as a mean, as a tool to, to educate children to love the activity, and that is great. And yet, you know, the number one sport in the world remains to be football, soccer. And uh, uh, this actually, on the other hand, shows us that we cannot generalize all children in one in one in one pot. We have to understand that the variety and and the inclusion uh, is is, uh, is 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 making our work so difficult. Mm. And 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 there are children that that if we don't teach them the skill, we don't have them with us. And there will be many children that if you don't go your way, as you have presented so nicely. You will lose them. And here comes the teacher and the coach with his role or her role to realize who is who and what approach should I imply uh, to, the pu to the pupils, to the students uh, I'm teaching. So it is far more complicated than we think. And that is actually what the facts are telling us. Because if what we are doing is right and good, then the children probably would say, we support you, we enjoy, we have fun, we want to be active. But 70% out of the children in one of the studies in the USA in 2015 tells us that the 70% of the children disengage from sport and physical activity at a very premature age. So something in what we are doing is incorrect and we need not to repeat the same mistakes. If we are going to do the same things we are doing for generations, we will get the same results. If we want to change, then we have to realize then we, that we have to come up with some new, new approaches and to be innovative and, and to understand that each child is not a grown adult. Each a child is a child and we have to teach him accordingly. And one word about your question, uh, Dr. Usha, uh, related to talent identification. We know today that every one of us should be very careful when pinpointing on a child saying, well, he is a talent. There were so many children, we identify them as talented children in sport. And once they grown up, the talent has gone and they didn't reach what everyone was expecting them to reach. So we have to be very careful and to understand that it is a complex uh, of, 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 of uh, qualities and capabilities, uh, psychological, physiological, emotional, uh, that needs to be taken into account when we identify a talent. And as a matter of fact, talent is related to the sport. You might find a talent for swimming, and he has no talent at all to games, to sport games. And you might find a talent in sport games, he doesn't know even to swim. So uh, talent, for example, in swimming, it means that the child has a sense of timing. He will swim one lap and will tell the coach, 
in about one or two milliseconds, how fast did he swim? That is a talent. That is something you don't learn. And, and the same relates to many other aspects of talented uh, athletes. And of course, there are some uh, general aspects that, that, uh, that uh, we can identify among all uh, very good athletes. But using the word talent at a very young age, I think we need to be careful not to harm the child, not to develop expectations, given the fact that today, athletes are performing at their best at a relatively older age than previously. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yuri. Uh, Dr. Kluka. Very, very interesting. And uh, once again, uh, a timely topic about how do we approach the content of what it is that we're delivering. Um, I, I just want to put a thing out there and see what you all think. Um, the games related approach, um, I think is particularly important for girls and uh, young women at this time. Um, Boys historically and traditionally have gone and learned to develop team building and those types of skills so that when they then get into the workplace, they understand and know what to do in terms of competition, in terms of working with people, uh, in terms of uh, accomplishing a goal as a team, etc. And so I'm just wondering um, how the two of you feel about or what do you think about um, what happens when girls get outside uh, the world of the home and then begin to to get into society, do you think that, that we are doing the girls and boys uh, any good for having boys developing these skills, uh, but not necessarily girls? So once again, I agree that this topic is really complex and that um, whatever answer I might give might not be the correct one because probably there's no correct answer since we're all trying to um, figure out the best way to help our students and, and athletes and just human beings um, just to develop. So what I think about um, helping girls in this situation, I believe that actually using game-based approaches is a good way of working with them but together because when they go out to to work and when they have to perform in work or if they have to perform um in sports or in school they will probably won't have to do that just with girls so just having a, a, a mixed um in that situation it's the ideal it's complex but it's the ideal it's um, having the complexity of the boys and the complexity of the girls that usually are more thinkers and probably the boys are more skilled or more um, doers, more competitive. Working with that together um, might actually benefit both um, sides. And I think the teachers and the coaches here are in, um, in a mediation um, role. They have a mediation role in this case and they need to be very experienced and learn with the mistakes that they will do um, along the way and um, make sure that they an analyze those situations with other teachers and other students and, and make sure that they will try to um, do differently next time. So I believe that that's, that's the best way to keep working forward to um, not only integrate the, the girls, um, but also the boys needs in <laughs> physical education and in life, I would say. Okay, Thank so, you. You're welcome. Yeah. Suzuki is going to speak right here. Okay, so I'm uh, so tell them that, so last comment maybe. So uh, physical education is for uh, all children. Eh? So physical education instruction eh, is not the same as sports coaching. Discovering the talent is not the purpose of uh, 
PE. The goal is to enable uh, all students to enjoy the activity together. So physical education should develop children who will continue to exercise throughout their lives. I think uh, what makes the girls hate PE is that uh, it is skill-based PE and uh, result-driven PE. So if so, we uh, incorporate uh, so game-based approach into the physical education. Girls is uh, going to like physical education and uh, so continue the, so playing the game more. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was so wonderful uh, because I think there's a lot of learning and we look forward to a curriculum because we are a, uh, we are a physical education college and all our products of physical education teachers need this. And I think we talk of sports side games, a lot of research being done in football and soccer, we're doing it. We are a principal. Kishore, sir, for your remarks, please. Thank you, Dr. Usha. I have partially seen the sessions. It was very, very interesting live and with uh, you know, actual, actual situations and uh, explicitly uh, explained and made clear. I placed on record I, our appreciation to both the resource persons, Dr. Naoki Suzuki and Dr. Biaka Ovir for their excellent presentation and all the panelists for their contribution. I am sure this would have definitely enlightened our uh, uh, entire our CE and community coaches. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Shah. Thank, Thank you, you very much for having us. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, indeed, it was, a, it was a real thing because uh, I think uh, I need to thank Rosa and others. You gave us an international platform to learn and to start new concepts. And we need to change our curriculum is what Bianca rightly pointed out. And it's time because we are still skill oriented. Our lesson plans are skills, but we do have something like a small sided games. But I, but I think uh, with this, uh, Physical education teachers would get the due respect like the other academic teachers. That's one of the most important thing which you have shown us, as Rosa and uh, you are rightly pointed out. I think that's the need of the hour and you are motivating the children to take a decision. So, so a lot of things which are coming in, I think it's, it's, it, will, it, will, it will change the entire physical education scenario in the country once you start. So I think it's time that you need to start a workshop. I wish we had a practical session because it was so nice looking at... Uh, Suzuki taking a, a session there, but I think it was important. We need to have a practical session. Only then you start experiencing what it is. And our teachers should have had that. So maybe in times to come, we should also think of it whereby we practical learn and then we start introducing in a, in a pilot project or in a small way, we need to introduce that. So thank you so much. On behalf of the Ministry of Youth, Affairs and Sports, Government of India, Kelo India, a big thank you. To thank you. Thank you very much. Suzuki, thank you so much. Because thank I think... Much. You have set you, the ball rolling, you are sown the seed, and you brought in a new concept. So I think uh, along with that, in India too, you'd find changes coming in. Thank you so much. I'd like thank to thank you. Dr. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. Sure, I think sure. we need to give credit to Dr. Walter Ho, because he is the one who introduced us to Suzuki. So thank you, yeah. Walter, because... <laughs> Uh, he was the one who you, brought Walter. the concept of teaching game for understanding and then the connection got through. So it's a network. It's thank you. I'm sorry. I need, I need to, to say thank you. For that I need to thank you. Walter. <laughs> we had a problem. We, had, we didn't have a resource person. I just contacted Rosa. Rosa said Walter is going to get us through. And Walter made in a day's time, he contacted and got us uh, a very eminent speaker like Suzuki and Bianca. Walter, we are indebted. So I would just come to you. So Walter, thank you so much because uh, you've been a great source of inspiration for this country to start in new concepts. A lot of things, it's not just limited to one. You brought, you introduced a lot of, lot from the physical education perspective from India. So on behalf of the Ministry of Youth, Press and Sports, Government of India, thank you so much. And hats off to you and please don't leave us because we look forward to for the collaboration and uh, seeing that certain things are started over here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank Bianca. Uh, thank you so much. It was wonderful because you made a lot of concepts clear and introducing a concept is not an easy task, as you said. And there are a lot of questions coming in. You've seen our PE teachers very eager to learn and they are willing to start off. The only problem coming in is we still go with the skill, but it's very difficult to bring about a change. But I'm sure uh, this has brought us light. So we, everybody will start experimenting on things. 
and i'm sure they would come out with a variety of games too thank you so much being <laughs> thank you and to thank uh, dr yuri thank you so much we missed you for so many days we thought but tomorrow we're going to have a final session closing tomorrow and we expect you to be here because president xp needs to be with us on the closing too so hope you will make it i will whatever is you will have you. to be with us so i think i, I think yes, I, hope I will I hope i'm not asking more <laughs> for that thank you so much for being a part of this i'd like to thank professor rosa i don't know how to thank you because i don't think thanks in words does express anything because you have made indeed i think this panel when you look at it's very heavy heavy with said so knowledgeable leaders got in and we find everybody together thank you so much rosa to making things making this as a a um, uh, platform where the contribution of uh, ipascave is need to be uh, rendered because we have the members of ipascave coming in and and rendering a great service for the indian community especially for the p community thank you rosa i like to thank uh, darling dhaka thank you darling it's i don't think again because always you say of hugs and you know hi thank you so much because you never make us grow old every time you keep telling us and uh, we feel sorry because uh, as long as we had a session there was always an energy flowing in and i don't know what's going to happen after a day or so so thank you so much <laughs> darling it's nice um, because you've been always inspiring us and getting us things which we could start off in the country so thank you so much and hope you won't leave our hands too thank you i'd thank like you. to thank uh, luisa it was wonderful having you because i said we learn a lot your way of teaching your expression is so good i think i'm pe teachers and our students would eagerly look forward to learning from you because uh, you're not just a verbal learning because you put the message across where the other person can easily take in the concepts so thank you so much luisa for this wonderful uh, contribution as a panelist i'd like to thank our uh, principal dr kishor sir for the members of the uh, i think the others know it for suzuki and for bianca these are principal of this uh, sports authority of india lakshmi bhai national college of physical education which is an academic wing we do have bachelor masters mphil and phd programs in physical education and also the regional director for the southern region so it's a very big task which is there so thank you so much dr kishor sir for the support is and he he makes it a point with whatever meeting goes in but he would not miss this international speaker session so it's and we it's a learning platform and for the information of dr yuri we are we have already made payment and i think you are member for this xp2 so with this india has got an entry so kishor sir has made it done so thank you so much for giving us this platform i'd like to thank dr sanjeev prajapati thank you so much for being a, a co-host and i'd like to thank uh, pranesh dr sanjeev patel and hari and my dear pe teachers thank you so much because i know it's been tiring morning to us evening to us sitting throughout throughout the day and listening to us a day more to go where we have interaction but there's a good networking so once again in the end for each one of you on behalf of all those present here thank you and namaste but before we go we have a feedback a feedback please and uh, please save the date for tomorrow evening we have the closing so rosa and uh, yuri and dali all those walter suzuki bianca please be a, please join us tomorrow at 5 for the closing function okay correct so yes thank you for presence too thank you namaste namaste yeah <laughs> namaste we learn more various uh, languages